this is Shannon with Florabella Collection. Today I'll be demonstrating how I edited this image using the new Florabella Color Play Actions for Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. Today I'm working in CS5, but there's also a video for Elements users, so look out for that. Um, here's your before image, and um, just real quick on my workflow, what I usually do is I will zoom in and look for obvious blemishes that I'd like to remove. And here there are just a few. Um, the first thing I usually do is I go to my spot healing brush tool. That's the eighth tool down. And I move over and I click spot healing brush tool. Looks like a Band-Aid. Kind of works like one. And you'll see that there's a circle on my cursor. And I can use my bracket keys to make it smaller or larger. I'm just going to make it about a little bit larger than the size of a blemish. And let me zoom in a little bit more. Um, I don't want to get rid of any freckles or beauty marks, most of them. So all you do, well, first of all, I'm going to duplicate my layer. You can also click Control J or Command J on a Mac to do so. Um, I don't ever like to work on my background layer. And I'm just going to click. It will sample from the surrounding skin areas, and it works really well most of the time. Here's another one here, another one. And her skin looks pretty good. There you go. You can also drag it a little bit if you like. Great. And now I'm going to move over to my patch tool. Now I'm going to make another layer now. So Control or Command J. Um, just in case I mess this one up, I can get rid of it or decrease the opacity. And I'm going to just decrease the amount of dark darkness under her eyes. Um, sometimes you'll have severe dark circles or um, wrinkling that you want to get rid of, but you need to be subtle. So you're going to go back over here and three down, select your patch tool. The patch tool you need to use by drawing and circling an area that you want to fix. So I'm going to circle that dark circle area, and I'm just going to drag down to a smoother, more even skin toned area. Sometimes you have to do it a couple times. Okay, now I'm going to deselect, and I'm going to zoom so I can look at it. So here's before and after. Now that's too much. We want her to have some expression down there, so I'm going to drag it all the way down and just ease it up until it looks more natural. About 55%. And now I'm going to go ahead and flatten. If I wanted to uh, do more retouching on her face, I would move on to the, the retouch and makeover set if I wanted to smooth her skin or really pop her eyes. But for this, I'm looking for a more natural edit. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to our actions. And I'm going to start with the clean base. Color Play comes with several bases to choose from. Clean Base is a great base for a lot of the add-ons in this set, and it loads several layers that you can go in and tweak if you want. Um, it also has a black and white conversion right on top, so you can see if you'd like to work with your image in black and white, and we'll be going over that later. But for now, let's just start with Clean Base. Um, on this photo, I used Pink Honey. It's one of my favorite actions from the set. These add-on actions are, are mini actions that you run right on top of your base. So the great thing about this set is the action and the base are separate. So if you start off with an, a raw image that you've worked with in Lightroom or ACR and you don't need much of that clean base, you can always reduce the clean base. And in this case, I'm going to keep it. Here's my pink honey. I'm going to reduce pink honey a little bit to about 70%. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is something I do to most of my images, and that is run one of these brushes down here that comes with the set, and that's the blush brush. I'm going to click it twice, once for her cheeks, once for her lips. My brush is already selected. I'm going to zoom in using Control or Command plus sign, and it doesn't matter about your opacity as long as you have it up so you can see where you're painting because you can decrease your layer opacity later. I'm just going to use my soft white brush and paint on a little rosiness to her cheeks. I come down to the other layer and 
just accentuate her lips a little bit more. This image doesn't have a lot of color, so I'm bringing color in by working on what I have. And she has beautiful lips, and in this case, it's probably a little bit too much. I'm going to decrease that, and I'm just going to decrease the opacity all the way. But see how it brings a little bit of glow and rosiness and life into her cheeks? I'm just going to keep that at about 48%. Okay, now for her eyes, I'm going to um, just accentuate her eyes a little bit. She's wearing makeup, and her whites of her eyes look good. And there's some catch lights, but um, we can work to, to sharpen those up or uh, pop her eyes a little bit more just within this set. So um, first thing I'm going to do is flatten, but I'm going to go ahead and lighten it up just a little bit. I'm going into my clean base. I'm just going to brighten it up just a tiny bit more. Maybe go down to the soft rosiness layer. I use this layer a lot and just add a little bit more rosiness. I see a little bit of cyan in her skin. so And that looks pretty. And now I'm just going to flatten. Right click, flatten. Well, before I do that, I'm going to show you the before and after. So here's before and after. So really quick edit, flatten. And now I'm going to move down to my detail brush. The detail brush I use on lashes a lot or in anything where I want to add some dimension. So here, you know, we're not going to need a lot because, and obviously that's too much. I'm just showing you where I'm painting. And then you're going to decrease, decrease the opacity, but just to pop those lashes a little bit more. And likely I would be a little bit more careful than that. Um, you can also use the detail brush um, on hair or anything else that you want to bring dimension to. It's not going to lighten. It, it burns. It darkens. Um, so in any case, that's a great tool. The other thing that I might do here is run the color brush just to add a little bit depth of color to the ocean here. All you do is brush it on. And maybe her scarf raise my opacity here just so I can see where I'm painting just to pop the color of her pretty yellow scarf that really makes the image come to life um, within this color brush are several different layers you can dull your yellows dull your reds you could make it richer add vibrance that's a great tool and here we have the before and the after it's a little bit vibrant so I'm just going to take that down to about 60% and um, if you want to add further dimension, you can run this tool called the Definition Palette. And I'm actually going to run it twice because I'm going to show you two different ways you can use it. With this tool, you're not painting on your layer mask unless you need to erase something that you've done. You're painting right on the gray layer right here. And you're either painting with black to burn or darken or white to lighten or dodge. So for instance, I'm going to paint with black at a low opacity, and you can just add a vignette. You can make something darker and richer, or you can add a little bit of a vignette. You can also paint with white to lighten. And a lot of times I will use this like a concealer underneath eye areas. That's a very subtle difference. Um, now, on the second layer, I'm going to go ahead and change the blending mode to overlay because I want to show you a little trick. I'm going to zoom in here on her eyes, and let's say that you want to brighten those catch lights or just brighten the eyes in general. I'm going to raise my opacity to show you. You can really brighten up eyes. That's going to be too bright, but you can just add a little bit more light and sparkle that way. Or you can just paint it directly on the catch lights if you want your catch lights to be lighter. Okay. I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny bit just to make our eyes pop just a little bit more. If we needed to, we could use one of these layers to lighten the whites of her eyes, but in this case, I don't think we need to. And that's it. Now, if I want to convert to black and white, I have so many different options. I could have done it before I flattened in the first place, or I can still do it now. Within 
this large group of actions, the add-on actions that you use over your base, there's the black and white conversions and tones. And all I have to do is run that. Instantly converts it to black and white. Open up the group and you have choices. You've got your blue-gray tone and your soft vintage tone. And here I think the soft vintage tone looks really pretty. I can move on and use the matte toner for a more matte look, although this looks pretty matte the way it is now. Um, or I could actually even run one of these other actions on top of that and decrease the opacity to give any sort of a, a tone or finish um, that I wanted to. So it's a real versatile set. It's a rather large set, and it's super easy to use. So again, we have our before and our after. Florabella Actions and Digital Resources for Photographers can be found at florabellacollection.com. Thanks.